The snowman with a big personality. Once upon a chilly winter morning in the small town of Frostville, the first snow of the season had fallen, coating the entire landscape in a thick, fluffy blanket of white. The kids of Frostville were thrilled. They zipped up their coats, put on their mittens, and dashed outside to make snow angels, have snowball fights, and of course, build snowmen. Among the kids was young Timmy, who had a grand idea. I'm going to build the biggest snowman ever, he declared, gathering his friends to help him. They rolled up a huge snowball for the body, a medium-sized one for the middle, and a small one for the head. They gave him a carrot nose, button eyes, and a big, crooked smile made of rocks. Once the snowman was complete, Timmy put his old red scarf around its neck and crowned it with a top hat he found in the attic. He stepped back to admire his work. I'll call him Frosty Joe, he said proudly. But this was no ordinary snowman. As soon as Timmy said the name, something magical happened. Frosty Joe blinked his button eyes and wiggled his carrot nose. He looked around, stretched his stick arms, and to the kid's amazement, started talking. Well, hello there, friends he said in a deep, booming voice. What a lovely day to come alive. I feel as fresh as a snowflake. The kids gasped. Did you just talk? Timmy asked, his eyes wide. Of course, I did. It's not every day a snowman gets made with such flair and style. Look at this hat. This scarf. I'm practically a winter fashion icon, Frosty Joe said, posing dramatically. From that moment, Frosty Joe became the talk of Frostville. He was no ordinary snowman. He was a bit of a comedian, always telling jokes like, why did the snowman call a doctor? Because he had a meltdown, or what do you call a snowman with a six-pack? An abdominal snowman. But the funniest thing about Frosty Joe was that he thought he could do anything. When Timmy and his friends started a snowball fight, Frosty Joe tried to join in. I'm an expert snowball thrower. He bragged. But every time he tried, his stick arms couldn't quite hold a snowball, and it kept falling to the ground with a splat. When the kids made snow angels, Frosty Joe tried that too. He flopped back in the snow, but as soon as he did, he got stuck. His whole snowman body just couldn't wiggle free. A uh, little help here, he asked, his carrot nose pointing straight up at the sky. The kids laughed as they helped him up. Maybe you're not so good at snow angels, giggled Timmy. Frosty Joe just huffed, pretending to be offended. Maybe snow angels just aren't ready for someone with my presence. Days went by, and Frosty Joe quickly became a beloved character in Frostville. He loved helping kids with sledding and even joined in the town's winter festival. But the best part came when he announced that he was entering the ice skating contest. Can you even skate? asked Timmy, very skeptical. Of course, I can skate. Frosty Joe replied confidently, wiggling his stick arms as if he had hidden talents. But, the moment he stepped onto the ice, his feet slipped, and he landed with a thump. He wobbled, slid, and spun around like a top, causing everyone in the crowd to cheer and clap. After a few more wobbly spins, he shouted, Tada, as if he had performed the world's greatest ice skating routine. The town cheered and awarded him a big, shiny ribbon that read, Most Enthusiastic Snowman. Frosty Joe wore it proudly. Then, one evening, as the sun was setting and casting a warm glow over Frostville, Frosty Joe gathered his friends. I might have to leave soon, he said, looking a little sad. Timmy's heart sank. Are you melting? Not yet. 
but I can feel the warmth coming. I'm not sad, though. I'll be back next winter, maybe even funnier and better at Snow Angels. The kids hugged Frosty Joe, and as the first spring breeze began to blow, he gave one last wave. See you next winter, my friends. Stay cool.